Knowledge has its rewards, don't you think? Well, let's begin. Okay guys, welcome to episode 2 of Infamous In-Depth. In this episode, we are going to be talking about Kessler's past, and the timeline of it, and how things that you might have thought were plot holes in the plot twist at the end of the first Infamous game are not really plot holes. Obvious spoiler warning, everyone. I shouldn't even have to say it. Okay, so with this video, I'm assuming that everyone has played Infamous 1 and seen the ending, so I'm not going to explain what happens. So, there are certain things that you might think are plot holes, such as how did Kessler get his powers? Did a former version of Kessler also build a ray sphere to give him his powers? You probably think it doesn't make sense, and it's like a paradox or something. But if you actually take the time to think about the small details in the story, there's actually a different story hidden that we can sort of make a good guess at what did happen and how Kessler got his powers and a few other things. So I am going to start going through the timeline shortly here. One thing I do want to say though is a lot of the dates that I've come up with are educated guesses, and almost everything with this is just an educated guess. These are not necessarily facts, these are things that are likely or as close to being the truth of what actually happened as I can get with as little information as we have. So we are going to be starting in the original timeline, which is the one that Kessler lived in. And when you do this, you sort of have to go backwards. You have to picture what would the world of Infamous be like if Kessler was not involved in it, because in Kessler's timeline, there was no Kessler that went back and gave him powers. And what was the first thing that Kessler did when he went back in time? He took over the First Sons, so that wouldn't have happened. Meaning that around the time that Kessler traveled back in time in his own timeline, Richard Tate would still be the leader of the First Sons, and eventually at some point, Alden Tate would have become their leader. Also, Empire City would not have been the First Sons' formal base of operations, or their main base, but they still had some things going on in Empire City. So sometime between 1970 and 1990, that is when Alden would have become the leader of the First Sons. In 1985, that is when Cole is born. This is Cole 1.0, the person who becomes Kessler. And in like 2005-ish, he drops out of college and gets a job as a bike courier. Then sometime between 2005 and 2020, Cole's conduit gene is activated and he gets powers. Now that's a pretty wide range of dates because we don't really know when exactly Cole got his powers. I would just assume that it was when he was already a bike courier. It wasn't very early in his life, I would think. And we do not know if Cole got his powers from the Ray Sphere or not. Cole 1.0 that is the person who became Kessler. When I say Cole for now, I mean Kessler, okay? Anyways, I'm guessing that how Cole got his powers had to do with Alden and the First Sons, because if it didn't have to do with that, how else would he have known that the First Sons existed when he went back in time to make his plan? It just makes sense to me that he would have had some sort of a run-in with them back in his own timeline. Also, 2020 is the date that I am guessing the race fear was completed by, because it is later in this timeline than it happened in the main timeline of the games, because Kessler accelerated the development of the race sphere, meaning that in his own timeline, it would have been made later than it was in the story that we see in the game, in the timeline that we actually play in. Anyways, I think that Kessler's powers were either activated by the race sphere when it was completed, or, and this is the one that I think is a little more likely, Cole, why did I call him Kessler? I'm calling him Cole now. I'm confusing myself. Anyways, is that Cole was used as a test subject by the First Sons while they were building the race sphere. Sort of like how Kessler uses David Warner in the infamous comic while he makes the race sphere and tests it and gets it ready to use on Cole. Which, by the way, that point is something that Ian actually sort of pointed out to me. Go check out his channel, link in the description. Most of you already watch his videos anyways. Anyways, I'm guessing that the First Sons somehow found Cole because he had the conduit gene and then captured him and used him as a test subject to build the race sphere. That just seems to be what would make the most sense to me. I don't know how they found him, 
because there's so much information we don't know that it's impossible to tell. Anyways, in 2012, which is just my estimated date, Cole marries Trish, and in the next few years they have two daughters. The daughters might be twins, I can't tell, I don't know. But I'm guessing that the oldest one of them is eight years old when the Beast comes, so that is why in 2020, I think, the Beast comes. That is when the Ray Sphere is finished, and I think that the Ray Sphere causes the Beast to come. Now this goes into a whole other territory of theories that I will probably talk about at a later time, but basically the short version is that John was not the Beast in the original timeline. Also that John's conduit power would not have been the Beast power if he was activated regularly. But how he was activated was not regular because the Ray Sphere malfunctioned and was destroyed. Well, malfunctioned if you play on evil and make the evil choice. It was just simply destroyed if you do it on good. Anyways, I believe that when something goes wrong with the Ray Sphere, it turns the nearest conduit into the beast. It gives them beast powers. And I will maybe talk about why in a later video, but it seems to me like John was probably not the beast in the original timeline because one, that would be a really, really big coincidence. And two, the beast in the original timeline seems to be different from John. Kessler says that that beast was intent on extinguishing all life, and John clearly isn't. Maybe Kessler never found out the beast's intentions, but there's other things too that point towards the beast not being John. One of those things is that, as far as we can tell, the beast is not a giant person, it's just a normal-sized man who still looks fiery and like the beast. And also, it seems like the beast has slightly different powers. In one flashback, we see that he has frozen things, and in both flashbacks, we see that the moon has been destroyed, which never happens in our main timeline in Infamous. That might have nothing to do with the beast, I feel like it does, I have no clue how it happened or why it was even put in the game because it just seems to not really necessarily fit with anything that happens in Infamous 2, but the moon was destroyed and blown up when the beast came. That is, in the original timeline it was. Anyway, so the beast comes in 2020 and Cole and his family run from it. They don't fight it, or well, maybe Cole did fight the beast a few times, I'm sure he did, but he didn't try to save other people or kill the beast to save the world. He just wanted to run instead of face it himself. Cole and his family ran from the beast for years. I'm just guessing it was five years or something. So in 2025, Cole's family and the rest of the world are dead. They have been killed by the beast. Cole realizes he has failed, and he makes a plan for how he can fix everything. Now, one thing that we don't know is how he got a time travel power. Also, it's not even clear that time travel was necessarily a power that he used, but it may have been a time travel device that he used with his powers that let him go back in time. We see these like metal stick things he's holding in the future, and then when he goes back into the past, they disappear. I'm also guessing that in 2025, when Cole 1.0 was making his plan, he went back to some sort of First Sun's lab that he had been in in the past, and he probably got blueprints for the race sphere as well as whatever time travel device thing he has. Anyways, you know what happens next, he goes back in time. When does he go back in time to? My guess is sometime around 1950. Why 1950? Well, if you calculate Alden's age, or what his age would probably be, and then just subtract that from 2011 when Infamous 1 and 2 take place, then it's going to be around there, as well as in the Infamous comic, you see an old-fashioned sort of 50s era car when Kessler, or Cole, Cole 1.0, who becomes Kessler, goes back in time. Also, I think that Cole would have wanted to go back in time to somewhere after World War II, because why would he want to be working on his master plan while the world is busy fighting a war and anything could go wrong and change major moments in history, because he's working with the most scientifically advanced group in the world. So it just makes sense to me that he would want to conduct his plans after World War II has already finished. Anyways, when Cole goes back in time to 1950 or sometime around there, he changes his name to Kessler, he goes to the First Sons and kills Richard Tate, 
There is technically no statement in the game that says that Kessler killed Richard, but it just seems pretty obvious that if he goes and takes over, he's going to take out their leader. Also, um, one of the dead drops says that Richard Tate died, and after that, Empire City was designated as the First Son's main base of operations. So anyways, Kessler kills Richard, he casts out Alden, and he becomes the leader of the First Sons, making Empire City their main base of operations because that's where Cole lives, that's where his future self will live. Also, when Kessler went back and cast Alden out, I believe that he was getting revenge on him for putting him through tests while he was making the race sphere in the original timeline. So I think Kessler wanted to get revenge on him by just giving him a horrible life and making him homeless. Yep, he's cold. He's cold. And Kessler begins developing the race sphere. Also, we see that Kessler has a robotic right hand and chest plate. We don't really know why either of these are there. Um, there are two ideas that I have though. Well, one of them is actually Ian's idea, which I will say first. The first idea is that the time travel device he used, which was in his right hand, damaged his arm so he had to get a like metal replacement or just maybe it's like a glove gauntlet type thing. Anyways, the time travel device that he used may have damaged his arm. And then the other possibility is that he took a lot of damage in a fight that he had with Richard Tate, so he had to get robotic parts on him, sort of like Darth Vader, because he was severely injured. Anyways, from 1950 to 2011, the First Sons develop the race sphere and make the plan for the blast, all of that stuff with Kessler, and also Kessler does some work with Dr. Wolf in New Marais, and Bertrand steals the race sphere at some point, but then Kessler gets it back, and some other stuff happens, but it's really not all that important to the main points of this video. Anyways, in 1985, Colmagrath is born, again, this time uh, Colmagrath 2.0, which is the Cole that we play as. I'm just going to call him Cole from now on in the video. In 2005, once again, he drops out of college, gets a job as a bike courier, and then in 2011, the blast happens. How do we know that it's 2011 and not 2009 when the game came out? Well, because in Infamous 2, in a cutscene, there is a check that Bertrand is holding, and it says 2011 on it, and that happened slightly in the past from when Infamous 2 takes place. So Infamous 2 must take place in 2011, and Infamous 1 takes place one month before Infamous 2, so I'm pretty sure it also takes place in 2011. Anyways, the blast happens, Cole gets powers, he kills Kessler, then one month later, the beast comes, this time as John, and Cole defeats him, because the good ending is canon, as far as we know, for now. Anyways, that was Infamous 1 and 2, if you couldn't tell. And also in 2011, the DUP is formed after Augustine is activated by the beast, and she captures Celia to show the government that she can be a conduit that has a place within them still. And this video is about Kessler's past, but we might as well just knock out the few major points left in the overall infamous timeline. In 2016, Fetch accidentally kills Brent and is captured by the DUP. In 2018, the DUP is undone by the conduit Delson Rowe. And that's all we got. That's really all the main things that happen in the infamous timeline, but more to do with Kessler himself and his past and what happened there. There is so much we don't know, but I think there are a few clues which I just discussed that if you add them all up together, you can make some good guesses at things that happened. Kessler's past is so mysterious and so interesting, and I really wish that Infamous 2 had told us a little bit more about it. Like why the heck did the moon get blown up? and maybe a few more interesting things that they could have added in there. Anyways, that's all I got. There's so much we don't know, so much we don't know. So many gaps that we can't fill in because we just don't have information about it. But that is Kessler's past as far as we can tell and make guesses about. Hopefully you found this video to be interesting. Thank you guys for watching and have a great day.